Welcome everyone to episode 52 of the Circle Back Podcast, the show where three great friends get together and just talk about video games. I'm Dan LaMarca. As always, I'm joined by Dan Dufernoy. Hello. And Shelby White. How you doing? And you guys, I want to talk about video game. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> you want to talk about video game? What is a video game? We're changing game? topics of this podcast? <laughs> yeah. No, we're talking about what we've been playing. Okay. We're going to start off game that all three of us have been playing. I know, Dan, you maybe just dabbled a little bit. I played a sad amount based on the fact that I have so much schoolwork to do, but I can't <laughs> stop playing Apex Legends. Let's talk about Apex Legends. So Apex Legends, a uh, game by Respawn, the mm -hmm. guys that made Titanfall and Titanfall 2. Um, they were acquired by EA right before Titanfall 2 came out, I believe. Uh -huh. And the story behind it, before we get into the game, is when Titanfall 1 came out, they weren't owned by EA, but it was a huge success. These are ex Call of Duty developers that made Respawn back in the day. Okay, okay. who so, worked on Titanfall? Yeah, they came in, which I actually never played. Made Titanfall, they're pretty good. They're awesome. Yeah, Titanfall's great. Uh, so basically, when EA acquired Titanfall, they decided, or when they acquired Respawn, for some reason that year, I think it was 2015 maybe or 2016. I, I can't remember exactly when Titanfall 2 came out, but they released Battlefield 1 one week before Titanfall 2 came out. That was and then downfall. Call of Duty came out the week after. So they sandwiched this multiplayer shooter in between Battlefield and Call of Duty and basically sent it out to die. So everyone was very upset because it was clearly the best of the three, but it's hard to beat Battlefield and Call of Duty, especially back then. Like now, Battlefield's numbers are dropping, you know, because of Battle Royales and stuff like that. So everyone was pretty upset with EA for doing that in general. Um, basically, even uh, even people at the company were like, "What the hell? <laughs> like, what are we doing? Why are we? Why is this our release date? You know, whatever." Um, but that game had an incredible single player campaign. Like, one of the best single-player shooter campaigns I've ever played. And it was also just an incredibly well-playing multiplayer game. That was a lot, a lot of fun. So, Respawn starts teasing. This was actually right as we recorded our last episode. Yeah. Uh, they started teasing. Oh, big announcement tomorrow. You know, things were leaking out. Uh, because, basically, they showed Apex Legends to... A certain press and uh you know influencers and stuff like that so they had an event they showed it of course stuff leaked out um they surprise dropped it on monday that monday so it was what was the date probably it was the day after the super bowl wasn't it yeah february 4th, 4th. or 5th something yeah, like yeah. that uh so they do a stream on twitch where they're just showing some like videos and like some trailers stuff like that and then they're like apex legends out now for free, it Xbox, kinda Xbox clapped. One, PS4, yeah. PC, and everyone, you know, free game. Let's check it out. This game has been incredibly successful. They've had over, I think they've had over 25 million unique players, which is just incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's numbers on Twitch are surpassing Fortnite. Like right now, obviously it's a new game. So, you know, pump the brakes a little bit, but it, it is extremely successful. Everyone is very happy with it. So basically, Apex Legends is a first-person battle royale. The shtick is it's a battle royale game where you have hero-like characters. They're called legends in this game. And they are kind of like Overwatch characters. Yeah, I would say it's a mix. Yeah, so you're taking the basic battle royale formula where everyone drops out. You know, In this case, there's 60 people. Um, you have to be teams of three. There's no solo. Yeah, there's right, no duo. There's 20 teams. So it's 20 teams of three. Last one standing wins. Circle closes in. You know, it's, it's, it is it's it is a battle royale in that sense. Um, it does really, really smart things. Uh, and the thing that, I, that we'll talk about first is, so obviously I, I mentioned Overwatch. Each, so there are eight legends right now. Uh, six of them are free. Two of them, you can either save your free currency that you get every time you level up, you get 600 of this free currency. Mm -hmm. When you get 12,000, you can unlock a character. Or you can pay 10 bucks, get this paid currency, buy a character. Pretty fair, in my opinion. Um, so each one of them has uh, basically an ability map to L1 or whatever on PC where you hit it, 
and they do something similar to Overwatch, right? So one character has smoke grenades. So you throw down a smoke grenade, you know, pretty pretty self-explanatory there. Another one, healing drone, right? Lifeline has a drone that heals in a small AOE around, so you have to, like, run over to the drone. It'll heal you up. Uh, Gibraltar has, like, a big bubble shield that will stop all incoming damage, Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't shoot through it from the inside either. Um, So, you know, just things like that, which really spice up the gameplay so it's not just every single person is is the same um and the good thing that they do is each character even though some of them are bigger looking some of them are like you know small nimble looking they all have the same run speed they all have the same hitbox Mm -hmm. like no matter what character you pick all you're doing is you're choosing what abilities you want pretty much uh you can only have one of each legend on a team so you can't have a team full of Healers, Healers yeah. yeah. So you're, you kind of it, it. It really is focusing on we're gonna make a team game. Um, the little wrinkles that I was talking about, I have I have some notes on things that I fucking adore about this game. So the ping system is the number one thing that that this game gets credit for appropriately because a lot of people play multiplayer shooters without a microphone because they you know it's that stereotypical. You're getting cursed out by a twelve year old who's better than <laughs> yep. you because you're not doing a good job or whatever, and like you know it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of serious at the same time um, <laughs> so this game basically you hit r one to ping something, and what it does is it alerts your team whatever you're looking at when you hit the ping oh there's an item over there so like it's that. all con- but it's all context sensitive so it's like it, you'll call out the specific item, so it'll be like, oh, level two helmet over here you'll look at a loot crate and it's like, hey, this is an open loot crate over here. Like every little, they make, there must be a hundred different like call outs. Sometimes it's like, uh, if you ping, like it, you can ping like an open door and it'll be like someone's been through here. Like they they really did such they a, a good through, job. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I was reading um, when I first started playing it, <laughs> when they spoke about the ping system for the last about month of developing the game they played the entire game without communications and only used the ping system to make sure it was thorough enough for somebody who doesn't have a microphone to be able to use so it smart. and be fully in, in, um, enveloped into the game. And I, I completely agree with it's you. Amazing, it's, right? it's absolutely amazing. So, and it's great that the characters say it out loud. So yes. even with the ping, like the ping will go off and obviously it'll pop up on your map or on your hood. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the character will be like, hey, this is what's going on over mm-hmm. here, you know. Like this is what I'm looking at. There's, a, they'll even call out the specific ammo or yep. the gun or whatever yeah. it is. It's like it's it's very intuitive. Yeah, and really and good. If you double tap the ping, you'll say there's an enemy over here. Yes, yeah, yeah. which is awesome. That's the most useful one. <laughs> and you can even look at your inventory at slots that you don't have filled. Like you can look at your arm. Like you can look at. Uh, you basically have like six inventory or eight inventory slots. If you get a backpack, you get open up two more. If you get a level two backpack, yep. you open up two more. Uh, you can ping like a locked backpack slot, and it'll he'll say, "Looking for a level two backpack." Like whatever you're looking for. If yeah. you if you ping like a sniper optic slot, like where you'd have a scope, it'll say, "Hey, you need a sniper scope." You know what I mean? Like it, it, they thought of everything, and it's just so so well done. Yeah. Um. I also have here. I, I just took like notes of like things that I wanted to talk about. They. A little wrinkle they added is they have a respawn system. Mm-hmm. Mm. So when your teammate, so just like most battle royales, when you go to zero health, you go down to like on your knees and you're like crawling around, right? So your teammate can run over and hold square, takes a few seconds, you'll revive with like 25 HP or something, right? So once you're down, if the enemy keeps shooting you, or if there's like a little timer that times out, then you're dead, dead. Now, normally in Battle Royale games, you're dead, you're out. Like, yep. you're out of the game, your team, uh, you're rooting for your team to win, like, whatever. In this, you go over to the crate that you drop after you die that has, like, your items on it. And if you hit square on your teammate's box, you pick up their banner, it's gold. Yep. And the banner basically, th- there are, like, 15... Or 20 uh, respawn stations across the map. You take these banners to that respawn station. You go over, you hold square, 
like 10 seconds goes by, they get shuttled in and dropped off Mm -hmm. and you're back to 100% HP, you're back in the game. And it is such a cool thing, such an interesting idea. And it is such a risk for your team because it's not quick. And all yeah, those no. <laughs> all those respawn stations are purposefully in wide open areas. Like yeah. they don't like hide them. They don't give you cover. Right. So like, if you bring someone back, you're yeah, like putting yourself. You, in and danger. and everyone can see that ship. You know, like <laughs> if someone's looking up in the sky, like oh, someone's respawning over here. Like let's go get them. Yeah. It's just it's such a cool addition, <laughs> and I never would have thought of that. Like they. That's why I'm saying, I love how. So obviously, this is iterative of battle royale. You know, it's a battle royale game, right? But you're not just spitting it out like i feel like call of duty did some very slight adjustments to make it better but they didn't really try to reinvent it they're like we're gonna make a first person battle royale and mm-hmm. they did it it's PUBG and first person you know what i mean like of course the shooting mechanics are different and everything like that they have little little differences but they, they these guys at respawn really like set out like hey we love battle royale games how what don't we like about them like they really thought about it and, and made really nice adjustments uh, i'll also say a lot of these games become like inventory management games and in this they do such a smart thing of if you have a gun that an attachment can be attached to when you pick up that attachment it automatically gets attached to your gun you don't need to go into your inventory yeah. and hit you know attach here like that's PUBG's biggest thing is like you're in your inventory a lot being like all right i just got a better scope let me go in take off the old scope right, put this scope on, on the environment you just yeah your your eyes should always be up and that's it's just yeah man. and even when you're inventory it'll tell you like uh they'll have a little circle with a cross through it telling you hey this ammo you don't need it you don't have a gun it that doesn't uses yeah. it or a scope the same way anything you know? that doesn't apply to the items that you have has that little the little do not cross use. out yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's perfect so, then you can go so right smart. through there because i mean when you drop to the ground the first thing you do is pick up everything you find right you know yeah. so um yeah then so, once you finally find your gun that you're going to use it's able to be like all right well let me clear up these three spots of mm-hmm. this crap i don't need mm-hmm. yeah uh they also another thing that i really really like is so i told you there can only be one of each highlander legend. highlander, <laughs> highlander. <laughs> yeah there can only be one <laughs> uh there can only be one of each legend on a team so they put you in a random order of choosing so like if you get to choose first like you might get to choose first second or third and the third person is the person that's the quote unquote jump master. And yeah. this is the thing that's really, really smart. Because in games like PUBG, Fortnite, like whatever, you are coordinating with your team. You're discussing, like, hey, all right, let's all land here because you have to drop out individually, right? Mm-hmm. So usually you're scattered a little more. In this game, whoever's the jump master guides all three of the players. Like they are, like every, they all fly together. And of course, you can break off if you want to, but. It's just such a smart thing to be like, hey, one person is going to control it. Keep that team together. Like they're emphasizing the important parts of the game without like beating you over the head with it. You know. Well, I was I was an idiot the first few times I played because I would just jump because I'm used to like Fortnite or something Mm -hmm. like that. So I jump out on my own and then I'd lose my team and die in like two seconds. (laughs) No, you can survive on your own. Oh no, very difficult. Before the the best I got, I got uh, we got second place and that was because I just made sure you stick with your team the whole time Mm -hmm. and I listened to my jump master. Yeah, that's right. Always, always listen to your jump master. master. I tend to, We're especially, I, I haven't played it too much, but I played the first couple of days it was out, and I, I just relinquished. I was, <laughs> just relinquish, let somebody else handle it, because mm-hmm. I don't know where to land yet. And it's yeah. those little nuances of, like, there's a certain way to fly to get the right distance. You know what I mean? Like, there, Yo, it, it yeah. has all those little things where, like, it's... It, it makes sense, but it's also, like, you, you need to have played these games to understand yeah. that, you know? So if you're jumping into this... You're just, I'm sure, just going on one straight angle to your location, and people are getting down before you, and then you're like, well, now they have guns and I don't. So, like, <laughs> learning that you need to dive bomb until you get a certain, like, uh, speed, and then you can pull up and then go down. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it works out well. Yeah. Uh, and I, each team has their own color when they're flying yep, down, so it's like, yep. so you can easily... You have really prominent smoke. Yeah, like, right uh, behind, like smoke a trail, trail behind you. Behind all the teams, so smart. Yeah, so you so. can really identify, like, where everyone's going. Even if you break off from your team, that's where I find it the most mm-hmm. useful. Is You could see the other teams, but you also see where your team landed, so yep. you're like, all right, yep. I'm going to go off my own, but I'm going to go find my team real quick. <laughs> it, 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 so on top of all this that we're saying that's really, really good, the gameplay, the shooting, the the movement, 
all the abilities, like everything just feels really, really good yeah. to play. Yeah. Like, and even just art design too. I just feel oh, like it's, it's awesome. Like beautiful. Yeah. Oh yes. You know? I love so. the characters. Mm-hmm. All the characters are really cool. Well, that's what I like about I think that's why this game entices me more than like a Fortnite or, mm-hmm. or you know, any Well, you don't drop down with games. a giant hammer, you drop down with <laughs> a team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's shit. cool though, but I, I like how each character not only played as two, I played as Bloodhound and Balgador. Mm-hmm. Bangalore. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um The soldier lady. Yeah, yeah, who throws a smoke uh bombs but like it was really really cool like how each character like you got to learn their nuances in order to yeah like bloodhound his whole thing is is he can see like where people he he sees the tracks can, of like, like footprints and, and stuff, stuff like that, like that. And you gotta like yeah. really and that's what we were saying that overwatch your playing style feel comes in yeah. you know because mm-hmm. you have that you gotta tailor your playing style towards the character oh, absolutely, and that's something yeah. i didn't realize at first because i would just i started as bloodhound and i just go in Running and just try around, to shoot yeah. and yeah. i die in two seconds and you really gotta like <laughs> you know it's cool yeah uh, one ability in particular that I want to call out as an interesting, like I talk about the little tweaks that they're doing, like the respawn mechanic is like a really cool addition to this type of game that I've never seen before. So Pathfinder, the robot, mm. he has an ability where all around the map, there are the, like at, at the tops of a lot of buildings, there are these like recon satellites basically. Right. And Pathfinder. So normally like you're any other character, you walk up to those, you can't do anything with it. If you're if you're Pathfinder, you walk up to them, hold square for a few seconds. It shows you where the next ring is going to be, uh-huh. so you can like plan ahead. Okay, I'm going into this area because that's where the ring's going to go. Like just little things like that that are like, wow, no, like I can't believe nobody thought of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they keep doing things like that, and it's I'm just so excited that I have a new like. I, I feel like I always have one game that I'm just constantly playing while I'm doing other, while I'm playing other Apex. stuff, and Apex is going to be it for a long time for me. Yeah. You know, Where does like, it fall, like on your, you know, your list of battle royale? I know. Are you guys? I you're, thought you were going to say like game of the year. I was like, you serious? <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm not that silly. No, uh, it's, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I, all I was going to say is, so when I first started playing PUBG, I was absolutely obsessed. Well, I know with it. you love PUBG. I was obsessed, but I started to like be able to put up with its bs a little less and less as other games started coming out this game hits a sweet spot right now where i'm like this is all that i would want to be like i wouldn't want to go play PUBG right mm-hmm. now i, I want to play this you know what i mean and fortnite i mean not even comparable for me because i never liked the building in that game there was a time where i got into it because i was like okay i see the appeal yeah but i never liked the building it was a hassle i wasn't good at it people were better than me at it it didn't make it fun so th- this is the one for me this is my favorite battle royale so far. you show I'm not. I, I've, I've spent more time with this in two days of playing than I have with Fortnite. Yeah. I played PUBG once. You know, like, mm-hmm. and I, I liked both. Fortnite just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. PUBG was something that I knew I'd have to sit down and play a lot in order to get more into. Yeah. And Apex was just. I started playing right away, and I was like, "All right, I like this. This mm-hmm. is cool. Like, this is much better than the other two on initial." reaction for me and then i saw dan was playing and we started playing together and mm-hmm. i was like all right this could be really cool to play yeah. with like two other people oh you when know, you have you know? a when you have a squad of yeah. players it is unrivaled like the the amount of like tactical decision making you can have and like yeah it's so yeah. so good it's it's, it's yeah. amazing what i really like is that we were talking about the ping system before we're talking to each other and still pinging stuff mm-hmm. because it's because it's, it, it's still, so yeah. good at because instead of saying oh there's a guy behind me yeah you, you could ping him, him and then they know at. where it is yeah. because a, a lot of times in these games, major issues is like at your three you're o'clock. giving well, <laughs> well you're yeah. giving like you're giving instructions relative to the, your camera yeah, angle, yeah. Mm-hmm. so nobody knows what the hell you're talking about a lot. So unless you're being positionally accurate, where you're like behind this building to the southwest, which is very hard to do in the heat of battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead, you just look, double tap R1, and now everyone knows where that enemy is, right. and we can run around. Like, it is just, it's such a smart thing. I think it adds thing. enough yeah. to the genre that it makes, it, like, really stands totally. out on its own. Even for someone that's not a fan of Battle Royale. Like, yeah. I Fortnite, everybody loves, but I'm like, yeah. you, Dan. I just, yeah. I never, okay, I played it, you know, right. a few times. It doesn't, you know, this was a lot of fun. And I think yeah. it's really, the, for me, it was the characters and the intrigue mm-hmm. of each, learning each, you know, oh, so each cool. character. And, and, and yeah, stuff like that. I've unlocked both the other characters at this smoke, point. The, the Caustic, who who drops like... Po- poison bombs. And yeah, yeah, he has poison like canisters that if you run, if enemies run close to, or if you, you can actually shoot them to activate them. Really, really cool. Mirage sends out like decoys. It's just so cool. The variation in the characters is amazing. Um, and I'm so excited because they have a f- whole roadmap already. Like, 
in March they're going to release a battle pass and new characters in March. You know what I mean? Like this is the kind of game you can get excited about because I already love it the way it is and then they are they are dedicating themselves to support it and add yeah. things. I'm so, very excited when they when they do get to 100 players. I don't know if it'll be on this map or on a on a new map because I have found my I have found myself winning more than like a normal battle royale and that's that shouldn't sound like a negative yeah. thing but it is because when it takes you 30 hours to get your first win in PUBG it's like such a you exciting. know so <laughs> exciting it, it's it's that dark souls effect that we talk about where it's like when you have to work so hard to get a small victory it feels so much sweeter you yeah. know what i mean and that's not like <laughs> <laughs> that, that's more like a I'm character too, flaw. I'm too good at this game. No, but what I'm saying, like, you shouldn't, like, that's that's like a bad way to think about things. <laughs> but it does feel like, you know, I, I think I was telling you, I, I think I've won like seven games yeah, so run, far. But I've, I've also played a lot. But I, the fact that I've won seven games, the game's been out not even two weeks, that's certainly not a bad thing. But it, it does make it feel like, okay. I would love to see what it would be like with 100 players instead of 60. You know what I mean? Well, 99, right? Got to be by three. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teams of three, you're right. Uh, but yeah, love this game. I'm so, so happy that I have a new a new favorite. Like, let's play yeah. this game, you know, with friends, you know, a couple times a week yeah. for the next however long. I, I absolutely love this game. Is it it'll, go, it'll go the year. Is it weird, sure. though, that... So EA... <laughs> Respawn developed it, but EA published it. Mm -hmm. Is that weird, though, that they just dropped it like right before Anthem? I feel like yes. that would be the same issue you said with Titanfall or, yes. and, and all those games. Now, the, the I mean, for that Titanfall 2 example in particular, okay. that's a first-person multiplayer shooter. Like, those were... That is so much more egregious because it's like you have two big first-person multiplayer shooters and you put them out a week apart. Like, that's fucked up. This is like, okay... Of course, Anthem is a online game, but it's a, you know, it's a Destiny. Like, it's not it's not a competitive shooter. So, at least they're not the same style of gotcha. game. You're right, though. This may, it, it may impact. I mean, if you're going to say, hey, now I don't need Anthem because I'm playing this game with friends, then maybe yeah. you don't, you know, but. It's almost like they're apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, here, we're sorry. Oh, another one? Yeah, here, here you go. We're sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I also just think it was so cool that they just stealth dropped it. They were like, "Game's out today, go play it." I think it's incredible that they were able to do that. You know? Yeah, yeah I didn't keep even, that because this game was it. clearly fleshed, out. cleverly oh, the fleshed yeah. out. You know, so it's like they've been working on this, and to be able to, like you're saying, drop new characters in March, like they they've clearly been doing this for a while, oh, yeah. and to keep it under wraps was kudos. A thing kudos that I also them. really really want to compliment Respawn on is day one. There are very few bugs. There are very few bugs. Oh yeah. There is very. There are no mm -hmm. glaring issues in this game. Like they do not. They launched a really polished, free to play game, and that is just like so admirable in today's day and age. You know what I mean? Like to have this be your first showing is just so promising for this game. Mm -hmm. Like I, I could not be more excited for the future. Good job, Apex. Apex. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah, I, I love this game. Beautiful. Uh, speaking of Anthem, though. I want to hear. I know Shelby got to play a couple hours of it. Yeah, so, so I so want to hear your impressions. February fifteenth. I've only spent about two hours with it, but February fifteenth. If you have EA access, yeah. you so can the day th that's play. the day bef day day before we we're recording. This. Yeah, so I got so, it yesterday, yeah. and I didn't it didn't fully download till like ten o'clock. So I played till like midnight and passed out. But um, it's it's cool. I mean, I I enjoyed the demo. You know, like again, I think we've what we all said it's something we've. It's not like it's something we haven't seen before, mm. sort of stuff. Um, fly around, feel like uh, Iron Man, but you get right into the story. They jump you right into it, kind of like a something that happened in the past. And then you start off as this freelancer. You're just like a new freelancer. Do you get to into pick your javelin right away? No, you just jump into a javelin, similar to the ranger, the regular ranger one, but. As you go on, but you jump into the regular Ranger one, you get a short little story thing, kind of like your tutorial, jumping around to figure out how to use it real quick. And then a, a cataclysmic event happens to make people kind of hate the freelancers, you know? So mm -hmm. then they're like, all right, the freelancers aren't the heroes anymore. And two years have gone by. You're just a freelancer kind of doing work on your own, 
barely getting by with your your little people and stuff and then you go and you get your first job and that's where which i really liked is the woman comes up to you she gives you the job and she says go ahead pick your javelin of choice you can start with whatever javelin you want that's good which is cool you know like because if you're that tank person go ahead and start with the tank one you know or the light one or whatever you want to do which one did you choose i chose the ranger because i just wanted the the all around effect right away you know i know that you get i know that throughout the story you're gonna end up having all four yeah it says it. it it tells you like the level everything it's very laid out um when you go into it's called the forge where you can upgrade mm-hmm. um, everything about and f- like full customization. You have like eight different customization mm-hmm. points when you're going. You could do color. You can make it look metallic, clean metallic, dirty mm-hmm. metallic. Cover I remember blood, some yada, of that yada, in, yada, the, you know, in like, the demo. We yeah, they in. let you touch upon it in yeah. there. Um, you get to choose the javelin that you want to choose, the colors. And then your loadouts, obviously, you can see what you salvaged while you were outside. One thing that you you got to do um, on the first mission that I went out, the expedition, they call it the expeditions. So the first expedition, I go out, you're on your own. You can walk up to certain things and salvage whatever it is. So it's like there was this one giant honeycomb looking thing. You salvage um, some stuff from it. Or you can go up to this metallic thing, salvage some parts from it and stuff like that. And then you can take all that and create new items. Mm-hmm. So it's a very similar thing yeah. to any other game we've seen like that. You meet these characters that sort of kind of like Jarvis to Iron Man, I would mm-hmm. compare it to. Not a computer, like it's an actual person, but they're sitting back at Fort Tarsus in a chair, the... seeing what you're seeing, giving you heads up, being like, hey, look at this over there, or you need to do this, or I'm on the computer. Basically, mm-hmm. you're... Uh, Barbara to Batman sort yeah, of situation, you know, you like yeah, it's your oracle. I forgot the name. It starts with a C that they give it, Cystix mm-hmm. or something like that. I can't remember. But um, so I did that, and then I started my second expedition, and that's about as far as I got. So I I like it. I think the flying feels better than it did in the demo to me. I've heard they tweaked it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it definitely looks. The characters look better. Um. There's this first character you meet named Owen, who I kind of like. He's like your oracle person, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he's funny. He's got like the humor to him, and uh, you work with him. All he wants to do is get his own javelin and go out with you and be like part of your team, which I'm assuming might be part of it later on. Right. But um, for right now, you're kind of just on your own. And then once you choose your first expedition, right away you can. That's where you can say. Do I want to play solo or do I want to play with some teammates? Okay. Mm-hmm. Cuz you you line it up, it gives you where the expedition is located and then it says underneath that press R1 and you can invite people to your group. And then say you you open up the invitation, it's the first 3 that click on, they're there with you, you know, and they'll go out with you if you choose to do that rather than solo. And you can also choose the difficulty of the mission. Mm-hmm. Which I'm assuming the harder the difficulty, the more the reward, which would be a obvious right but uh but yeah so, so that's when you're about saying as far as i got when you're saying you choose solo or teammates do you actually play solo or does it pair you with randos it's i it made me solo you so played solo. i played by myself okay. just one person yeah into, into the world yeah but i'm assuming that they they probably dole down the amount of enemies yeah, that come for, at you I, I and stuff like that scaling. you know i didn't know that you could even do that i didn't think so either but when i did it Especially even the first mission that I did was I uh, played by myself. Yeah, and I don't know if that's just a thing because mm-hmm. it is that 10-hour demo. You know, like maybe that's why okay. and stuff like that. And I don't have All right. friends well, we'll, on Xbox, so yeah. <laughs> I didn't invite yeah. anybody into it. But, we'll uh, check out. Yeah, when, you know, when we'll the full one comes goes. out, we'll see if that if that still is like yeah. that. Because I, I know I would prefer that on some levels. You know, like when I first get into a game, I don't want to play with a bunch of people right away. I, I like playing Did by myself, it? figure yeah. it out, and then I'll play with people, you know. Totally. So, so. we'll... Without without saying anything, spoiling anything, yeah. story so far. Story so Talk far, it. it's pretty basic. You know, nothing crazy. It's like a basic setup. Yeah. And then, does it seem to be prominent throughout the missions at all? Or when you go back to Fort Tarsus, are you getting more story bits? When you go back, I only went back to Fort Tarsus once so far. And they kind of, they give you little background stuff on like what you're doing and... Not too much. I mean, I'm sure it gets fleshed out a lot more. Like I said, I only played mm. the first two hours, mm. and I was kind of just like sitting through all the customization stuff, trying to see what I could see. Right, right, right. How much they let you actually do. Okay. And um, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna have fun playing it. 
I don't think it's going to be the greatest game this year, but uh, mm -hmm. I definitely am going to enjoy playing it for a little while at least, I hope. Yeah, well, yeah. E even coming out of the demo, uh, I was, I mean, I definitely wasn't high on it, but I think I basically have the feeling coming out of that of, hey, I like playing it. Yeah. It's fun to play. I like a lot of the design stuff. I think it looks great. Uh, I I just was concerned that there's not going to be enough story there, which, again, yeah. we need to take this game for what it is at face value. It, it is a Destiny-like. Yeah. So yeah, very it, much it, so. We can't project it to be a Anything game that more. it's not. You know what I mean? But that's, like, just, but that's honestly, that's the developer's I'll, fault. So a lot of it is because when they first showed it, there was no like there was no focus on the story and everyone was like are there character oh, relationships yeah, like yeah, yeah. are there this that and they're like oh you guys want that or right, let, let's like, do that there is a story don't worry <laughs> it's like, there yeah. is you definitely like that character i was saying oh and once you meet him in person like he talks a lot mm -hmm. like he's this is going to be a relationship to where mm -hmm. it's you're going to be with this person for the majority of the game i would right. assume and then it, it's kind of like like i said you're freelancer that nobody really likes anymore you're not considered heroes mm -hmm. So when they come in and they give you a job, it's like it's supposed to be once in a blue moon. But I'm mm -hmm. assuming to progress the story, you're just going to keep getting jobs. Of course, yeah. But um, it's kind of like a you have to do this because you have no money and you need my money in order to do this. So and the first mission they give you is like one of our um, scientists is missing. Go find him. You know, mm -hmm. so we've seen that before, but yeah. it's that sort of thing. So it's like go find him. And they're like, he should be dead. He's been out there for like two days. They're like, no, this guy's very resourceful and mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing. So go get him. And okay. um, so that was cool. One thing about the flying, I think the flying was definitely different from the demo is that I felt like in the demo, I was overheating so quickly. Not at you all. You think they changed that? I think they, I think they it? made it that way in the demo so that you wouldn't be flying too much, you know, like mm. that you would stay in your area, kind of use everything because you also, and I didn't notice this in the demo if it wasn't there, when you straight dive down while it was flying. It, cools it does yeah. it does yeah. cool down all right because okay. they let you fly through you do a lot of underwater stuff in the first mission you mm -hmm. go through a waterfall you do the diving it teaches you all that yeah um the first minute you kind of go through like a node and you got to chill at the node while enemies are attacking you so wyverns come at you so you got to fly mm -hmm. up start attacking them but stay mm -hmm. in the area it's i like it a lot i think the overheating wasn't as much as it cool. and yeah it's cool. I like. Nice. It. So right. you get the since you have EA, you get the full game when it comes out on the twenty second. Is that? Oh, I'm gonna have to buy it for sure. Oh, I think. Okay. I, yeah, I they give so. you. I think when with. Yeah. E so did you pre-order it already or no? I did not pre-order. So with EA Access, you can just play ten hours. You could play ten hours. It's definitely not the full game. Like you don't just get it with EA Access, but they give. Yeah, you, no. They give you the ten hours. That's interesting. I always. I, I was under the impression that it was you pre-order the game, then you get. Oh, the 10 out? No, yeah. I didn't. Well, there, there's been like seven different, oh, you well, can play I, the game today. Like. I already know for a fact, <laughs> yeah. if you have the $100 version, it's already out. You're playing that's, it right now. Oh, it probably weird. came out on the 15th, right? The week yeah. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's weird. So. I don't know. It sucks. I hate it. That's silly. Yeah. But, you know, easy money for them. Yeah. Because people will buy it. Yep. <coughs> yep. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, on the next episode, uh, we'll talk... A little bit more about that. I think I'm gonna probably be playing it. I know Shelby. Yeah, gonna I'm be, definitely gonna, gonna, gonna play, play a little bit so. more. I'll try and take up the ten hours. I'm kind of hoping that if I buy the game through that, I could. Just I would hope save. Yeah, I would fucking. I don't want so. to have to. That's why I didn't. Me? I don't want to play too much and then have to do the next. You should the same look into that hours before again. you yeah. start pouring. Otherwise, hours I'll into it. yeah, I'll put like yeah. two, three more hours into it, and that's it. Right. Oh man. Uh, all right. So that's Anthem. Um, again, we'll talk next episode a little more about it. Um, so I am basically, I started a bunch of games and barely got into them because I just couldn't stop playing Apex Legends. <laughs> uh, so before I talk about Game some of the, the past two weeks, I know, Apex Legends. I know, but before I start talking about some of the games that I've been playing, the newer games, uh, Dan, you're still playing Hollow Knight? Still playing Hollow Knight. I really don't have much more to say. Still enjoying it? Fought a few more bosses, got some new areas. Um, I'm loving it. I'm just at the point, um, we were talking last time, there's like these three, I forget if they're called Seers or something like that. Mm. I guess they're like the, the big, either the big bosses, the big mini bosses. I'm not too sure the mm -hmm. lore wise. But uh, yeah, just I'm just going around trying to find them. I, you know, I really don't have much more to say. But I have been spending most of my free time uh, pouring hours into Hollow Knight and just exploring cool. the world. And I love it. One of the best. One of the best, oh. not only one of the best games I've ever played, but 
Yeah, one of the best games I've ever played. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah no, pretty much nailed it right I'm, on the I'm nose. Leave it at that, so yeah, uh, we'll have a little bit more to talk about Hollow Knight later in the episode. Yeah, we will. Oh, because yes, because I know something's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shelby, you've been playing uh, another Kingdom Hearts game. Is this I, correct? I did. I, I Are mean, the rumors I, true? Are you playing Kingdom I, Hearts? I, I I touched on it last time, and I kept calling it the wrong freaking game. <laughs> But um, yeah, you were calling it recoded. I called it recoded, but which is a game. But I've been playing Rechain of Memories instead. That's, is it called Rechain of Mer- Memories? Well, it was it's it was Chain of, Mem- of Memories. It's the remastered. Um, the re-chain again, of memories. horrible, horrible names. Guys, Kingdom Hearts is the best. Don't yeah. knock it. Uh, I will say, I I know. Last time I said I had my issues with one, and that I didn't like this one because it was a card game, and it's not like my forte there. But it is a fully built up from the ground game compared to its uh, Game Boy Advance that it originally came out on, Mm -hmm. and I'm getting better at it, so I think I'm enjoying it more, obviously. I think that's how it works hand in hand. Uh, One thing I will say is that I'm noticing what the, the vein of the story is that you go into this place called Castle Oblivion. Uh Um, Right after the first game, you're chasing, still looking for uh, Mickey Mouse. And you're Roll Mickey. going to the Castle Oblivion because you're searching for your friend still. And it wipes your memories as you progress through the castle. So I think the gimmick of this one is, considering it was a Game Boy Advance game, is that you go to all the same places you went to in the first game, but your memory, everybody's memory is wiped of going there. So they, you go into the same areas, but the story's different. It's laid out differently. So that's how they kind of do it. And it's not bad. Um, They have a tier system. So you walk into a room, and then in order to open that room, you have to use a card. So it'll say you need a red. There's red, blue, and green, and the gold cards. The gold cards open story uh, places. But a red one will be something bad. It'll be like um, this next room is going to have a ton of Heartless in it. But if it's the only one you got, you got to open the room and do that. You know, you got to go through the fight. One of them will be like a blue one will be like, all right, you're going to go in and you're going to go into an inventory place where you can trade items. The next one will be like, there'll be a big treasure chest in this room. So it's cool. Every every layout is completely different for every person, depending on how you want to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you have the same sort of boss fights against the same people. So, the, I mean, that's the only difference, really, to the story. Like I said, I'm getting better at it, so I kind of like it a, a bit more. Mm-hmm. It's about the same length as the first game. Right. It's probably 20 to 25 hours worth, you know? And it's a direct sequel to the first game? Direct sequel to the first game. So, so going one right and two into the second game. Se- yeah, okay. Yeah. This well, is the, in between the... Yes, it's yeah. exactly in between one and two. This is the Clone Wars. This is the... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no I'm actually I, I know a lot about the story of Kingdom Hearts, even though yeah. I don't don't like those <laughs> games. But uh, so you're playing them in the order that they came out, rather than playing them chronologically. No, I'm playing them not. Well, I guess so. I guess in the order they yeah, came out. Yeah, you are so far. That's the, what I'm asking. The thing is, because you already yeah. there's one that's before one. Yeah. So they chronologically they, they put it out in like whatever way they tell you to play it that's mm-hmm. how it's laid out okay so yeah i'm uh, it goes one then this then two which are in chronological order and release order it's not chronological i will say it's not chronological because yeah. like well, 365 yeah no, or, no no not those i mean between one chain of memories and two those yes, are chronological the, yes of course yeah and what i'm the saying first three what releases, i'm saying is like yeah the other ones are like prequels and there's stuff, some that yeah. are prequels there's some some that are just uh stories yeah. for no reason dream drop distance <laughs> yeah. like there's a lot of but all that stuff is like very important to the story yeah. of these games <laughs> i know i will so, say they, they like they talk about this organization in this game that organization 13 which was not a thing in the first game but you know if you had played the prequel to one yeah you would have known the story of the keyblade wars yep. you know? yeah, yeah but so much but that's why it's I'm saying lot. you have to make the decision. All right, am I just going to play them in chronological order, yeah. or am I going to play them? I in mean, with the story that they came out. Yeah. You know? Have you played them all? You got no. no. With the story so far, pack, I'm just going to play it. Story, yeah, I'm just going to play it in the order they tell you to play it. Okay. Which was a lead up to three, you know, like that's that was the plan. So what's in that box? What else is in there besides those three? Um, for this one, does it have point two or whatever? Yeah. And so it's got it's it's the uh, remastered versions of every game. So the first one, it's Kingdom Hearts yeah. Final Mix, which yeah. is one. Right. redone then it's kingdom hearts rechain of memories mm-hmm. which is the one i'm playing now which is the built up mm-hmm. advanced one okay. then it's kingdom hearts 2 final mix mm-hmm. whatever it is um 
after that, I believe it's the three five eight game. Mm. Maybe recoded after that. I think there's five games on the first disc and then a couple games on the other disc. I believe recoded happens in at the same time the chain of memories happens in in the story. So probably just a different character. Like, or yeah, like it like happens yeah. during those events. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So. so yeah, I don't know. And I've, I've heard in two you play like a different character as, as well, so it's like it's all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to um, be interesting when you get to some of those yeah. ones that are out of chronology because you're going to be like, oh, that makes so much more sense yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the thing that I just played and I was like, who the fuck's Organization 13? Yeah, and you're exactly. going to be like, okay, now I know. Because like, they actually introduced some of the characters that if I just went right to two, I'd have no idea what was mm-hmm. going on. So mm-hmm. it's... it's the story, it's it's a big story. It's a friggin' big story. Do we story. agree Kingdom Hearts the most convoluted story in uh, video games? 100%. That's probably true. <laughs> 100%. That's probably and it's true. Disney, which is a hysterical thing. I think my pro- my problem is if I start getting through these games, I haven't seen all the Disney movies, like the newer ones, so I'm going to have to watch. <laughs> I still haven't seen Frozen. <laughs> oh. What I will say is the uh, large reason why people like these games, I mean, you kind of play through, like, the story of the movie yeah usually yeah, yeah. when you go to the world it's the right? same bad guy and stuff like that so maybe just, you don't need to watch it maybe you just do that i i i do know that in the in three they it looks like the movies you know like it looks yeah. like mm-hmm. the disney movies and some of the scenes are shot for shot yeah what it was in the movies like i, I know cool. the pirates one was the pirate ship and at world's end mm-hmm. uh, coming over the sand and stuff yeah. like i know they shot for shot did it. So that should be pretty cool to see. Yeah, it's interesting. So we'll see what All happens. Right. Well, that's Kingdom Hearts that's cool, Chain of Memories. Thank you for yeah. playing those. Yeah, I'm going through it. I, I have heard bad things about a lot of Final Fantasy characters not being in the later in the later ones, like the uh-huh. three and stuff. So that kind of sucks, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they don't have any Final Fantasy characters in three? Well, I, I mean, they're, they're always not many. Many. Yeah, yeah, they're always going to have some because yeah. some of them are main characters in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, like you play as a fake Final Fantasy character. But... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on. Moving on. Uh, I will also say I started the second run in Resident Evil 2. I started playing Claire's second playthrough, cool. which is when it basically cuts out everything you've already seen, and it just plays the stuff that you could only see from Claire's perspective. Um, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I mean, that game's amazing, so I'm enjoying it, but I do have so many games that I started that I want to continue, so... I'm probably going to put that on the back burner for now. Um, one of the games that I'm talking about that I did start but have not really put much time into is a game called Sunless Skies. So Sunless Skies is a... Hmm, how do I explain this? So do you know what interactive fiction is, IF? Mm-hmm. So it's like the beginning... You played Firewatch, right, Joe? Mm. You know the beginning of Firewatch, how it's it's like a... Ver, it's like a it's like a story written, and you make choices that affect Just what happens, yeah. right? It's like Goosebumps. Sure. <laughs> oh, it kind of is. It's like Choose Your Own Adventure, right? So this game is basically IF with um, some... So the actual gameplay is a top-down perspective of this... You can call it a spaceship, but it's actually a train engine. But it's it's this it's this ship in the air in the in the, the in space pretty much, and you control with WASD, shoot with your left click whatever. But it's like a you're you're flying around. It's almost like a roguelike. But when you get to certain places, you dock, and then you like have interactions with characters. You can get new party members to help like you know help out with your ship like stuff like that. And uh, basically, the whole idea of this game is. London, so this is basically like steampunk, Victorian era London had to leave Earth and like take off to space, right? But they do it with, it's you're literally piloting the front train car of a train. They they made it for space travel. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's like a whole, I'm not going to get into like all the fucking lore around <laughs> this game because the the shtick of this game and the reason why people really like it is because the writing is actually very very good the character work is good um a lot of the interactions you have like you might come across like a blown apart space vessel right you can search it and then you have a bunch of different options of what to do do you want to just strip off the engine so that you can upgrade your engines do you want to search for supplies inside then you go inside and it's like you feel a creak and something happens like do you want to stay or do you want to just cut your losses and get, you know what I mean? So it's fun in that way. 
I don't think I'm as into it as a lot of people are because I just can't really, I don't really like the actual overhead like control of that ship. It doesn't feel great to control. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of tactical considerations. Again, I've only played maybe an hour or something like that. Um, but it just came out this year? Yeah, it just came out end of January, I believe. Um, but it, it, it has excellent reviews. I think, you know, th- there's something there. It's just not really clicking with me is what okay. I would say. Because um, it's on PC. <laughs> <laughs> it's not clicking. <laughs> um, all right. So that's on the skies. Um, I'm definitely going to give it more time because I don't want to just cut it. I, I, like I said, I know there's something there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe I'll play another hour or so. And if I don't get into it, then maybe it's just not for me. Um, another one very, very similar, actually, to the way I'm feeling is Metro Exodus. Oh, fill me Ooh, in. Yeah. That just yeah. came out yesterday. Just came out. Yeah, just came out yesterday as of this recording. And uh, I have played the old, the other Metro games. Um, it's, I was never like a huge fan, but I liked them for their. So we talk about how Mutant Year Zero basically steals Stalker, right? These games are Stalker. Mm-hmm. Like you, you got to know that. It's like. It really is playing in that same same sort of space that Stalker's playing in. So I like that sort of stuff. I like the cool sci-fi. Like, you know, it's literally called Metro because people are living in the tunnel, the train tunnels, because you can't live above ground. It's too radioactive, right? So I like a lot of the trappings around it, and I like some of the storytelling. You know, these guys have in the past, like, told really good stories in these games. The things you don't like is the gunplay doesn't feel very good. The a lot of the mission structure is totally weird. So I said, okay, I've liked these games. I've never loved them. New ones coming out. People seem to like it. I got to give it a shot. I played the opening sequence of this game, and I don't know if I've ever played a game with like a worse first impression. It was so... Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's... <laughs> it was... It's just really off-putting in the beginning. Oh, really? Yeah. It doesn't control well. It doesn't... It it just... So, I'm never a person that's like, I need all my games to be nice and polished. I'm not that person. But this is like a... a like... It is not even it's close to polished. It, it's like... The, the enemies in the opening... Like they're basically like uh they're creatures but i don't really know how to describe them they almost look like dogs like wolverines almost and they one of them was just like looking at me in the corner and whenever i walked near it it would like glitch around like this and not attack and then it was just so weird like it was it was a combination of things and then you you finally get to the point where the tutorial mission's over and you know you find people that you know and they're like carrying you back to town and all the all the voice acting is really stilted. Like the writing isn't great. Really, like, it was weird. Those games are known for their. It's, I know. Based on books, right? Yeah, it left a really really bad first impression. Oh, man. So now I, I have read reviews and 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 heard people talk about it. Obviously, people like this game. Um, so I'm hopeful that you know. Again, like I said, this is just the opening 45 minutes or something. So. Maybe it's just a really bad opening and the game's not bad, but similar to Sunless Skies, I have not really enjoyed what I've played so far, but I'm going to give it a little more time at least just to see, hmm. you know, but as of right now, yeah, and not not a good first impression. It's a direct sequel. You're playing as, was Artyom? Or yeah. It's, it follows the What was the previous the one? Trilogy. 2033? 20, yeah, 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 2033. Or was it Last Light? No. There was Last Light. And 2033. Okay. Uh, Last Light's the first one. Gotcha. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know. I, I forget which one. Ah, I wasn't expecting that because I've been following it too, and everybody's been saying that it was pretty solid. And it's, you know, it's got a pretty cool trailer on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just on an absolutely terrible first impression. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to continue mm-hmm. and, and give it a fair shake, but I'm not impressed by this game so far. Wow. Um, Last one that I started but have not got back to is Life is Strange 2, Episode 2 has come out. Um, I played, again, probably about the first half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, they're doing some interesting stuff already, I could tell. I'm, I'm definitely going to be into it. I just have not got around to it yet. So It's a, it's like five episodes this season. Yeah, usually they are. The first one was five episodes. Yeah. Um, 
So I definitely want to get into that, finish that up. So for sure, I'm, you know, yeah. uh, the only reason I have not done it is because of Apex and in school. So, um, but mostly because of Apex. Yeah, if we're being honest, it's Apex. <laughs> uh, all right, and then the last new game that I've been playing is an interesting one. Okay, Tetris Ninety Nine. Oh, I have saw you guys that heard that about Tetris 99? They released no. it for free, did they not? Yes. Right? So we're going to get it, later in the episode, we're going to talk about the entire Nintendo Direct. Um, but part of that Direct was a game called Tetris 99. So it's made by Nintendo. It's a Tetris game. It's a Tetris Battle Royale where <laughs> there are 99 people playing Tetris at the same time. And... That's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> so there's 99 people playing Tetris at the same time, and when you so have you, have any either of you ever played like multiplayer Tetris games like Battle Guy Dan or any no. any sort of like head to head Tetris games? Oh yeah, Yoshi's uh, yeah. Uh, what's, what was that one called? I uh, love that one. I had uh, Tetris Attack. Tetris Attack. I love Tetris Attack. Closest so, I've been is like facing Tommy Morello and Guitar Hero. That's <laughs> closest is like lying down. So <laughs> so in regular. Tetris battle games. When you clear lines, you're sending over garbage to the other person. Yeah, Tetris attack. You get the big blocks. So on the bottom... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you break their whammy bar. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so basically what, what happens is when you clear lines, at the bottom of their board, they get like gray blocks with mm-hmm. just one space in between, right? So now they have to work down their entire board, and then they can clear those gray blocks. So in, t- in Tetris 99, you're doing that, and you get to control which one. So it's it's your board in the middle, and then it's these tiny little boards all over the sides oh, that are oh, all the 98 all other people. Oh, and they're, you can see them playing in perpetuity with you, and you are kind of controlling. You're either choosing... Uh, there's like four different modes you can do for your line clears. So one of them is like attack or something. And that means you're sending out lines to other people really fast, but you're also opening yourself up where more people can attack you at once. Or you can put yourself in like, I forget what the name of the mode is, but you're not sending junk over to other people, but they can't send them to you as fast. It's really strange. And what I will say, it's total. This game is bare bones as hell. Like it has nothing. It's like this game mode, and then your stats, and that's it. There's like no menus. It's not like it's. It's very basic, but it's free on Nintendo Switch if you have the online service, and it is just a really weird and interesting idea. And it's it's good Tetris, and it plays well. The music, it's that music that you love from Tetris, and. Basically, once you get to down to 50 players, it speeds up, and then the music changes to, like, the updated version, like the GBA Tetris or the Game Boy Tetris music. And then when you get to 10 players, it speeds up again to, like, crazy fast speed. It's just a really cool idea, and it's a, it's a fun little game. It's nothing, you know, <laughs> to write home about, but it's it's a cool little... That's cool. You know, during the Direct, they were like, Tetris 99, here's what it is. It's out now. Go play it. You know, that's awesome. It was pretty neat. So, thanks, Nintendo. That is the last game that I've been playing. Thanks for being a bro. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. What a dude. <laughs> so we're gonna jump right in. I have three different things that I want to talk about. Uh, one of them is gonna be quick. Um, they so Team Cherry announced that they're making a full blown sequel to Hollow Knight. Yeah. Wait, that's a sequel. I thought it's that was a DLC. Full, no, no, it's a, a sequel. full sequel. Full sequel. Where you play as Hornet. I thought that was DLC. Nope. Oh, wait. That's even more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's literally... I was so blown away. I just went back into my chair. It is a completely new game. Full sequel. They haven't said if it's a prequel or a sequel, but you you play as Hornet, who if you played Hollow Knight, you know who that is. Um, it's called Silk Song. And they announced it, showed the trailer... They said there's over 150 new enemies. All the bosses are new. It's a game, full-fledged game, just like Hollow Knight, like new, giant, normal S, where you play as Hornet. Oh, it looked man. really cool. It looked like there were a lot of like traversal abilities. Like I, I felt like they took a, a note from um, kind of like Celeste a little bit, you know, where you can kind of like jump and then 
zip yep. into a spot, Absolutely. zip into a spot. Like Absolutely. I, that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, this. The looks first cool. thing that I thought of is Ori in the Blind Forest. Like, it, oh yeah, yeah. There Those, was something the about the movement while you're attacking that really, yeah. really reminded me of it. I like she has like a little spear and everything too. It, like, mm-hmm. it looks really cool. And having only played about an hour of Hollow Knight, mm-hmm. nah, I'm interested in this game yeah. already. You know, it's, like it, it's, it's awesome. I'm very, very. Excited. Did they have a release date yet? No, they haven't said. I mean, Team Cherry is literally three people. I don't know if you know that. So, like, it'll, take, yeah. it'll probably take a little time. But they, I mean, they did say it's, like, in a playable state for them. So, like, maybe they're moving along faster than we expect. I don't know. They've been so good with all the free DLC just for Hollow Knight originally. So, uh, these guys are hardworking, so awesome, hardworking yeah. folks. That's great. I mean, you got to uh, assume they have the basis from Hollow Knight of already, course, you know, like, yeah, of the game. Of so, they probably got to work on it right away. Yeah. But, it, I mean, when you look at the trailer, all these new environments. Uh, oh, I didn't know it was a new game. I thought it was like a, new a DLC sort of full-blown sequel to Hollow Knight. <gasps> I like that they went with like a red color aesthetic. Yep. Um, oh, my gosh. It's, it's neat. That's exciting. Yeah, it's neat. I got to beat Hollow Knight first. Yeah, you'll get there. Before the game comes out? I'm pretty sure you will. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, from the highest of highs, talking about Silk Song, it's time to go to the lowest of the lows. And we are going to talk about why Activision fucking sucks. Because they stopped making Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> <laughs> that's not why, but that's true. <laughs> All right. So, in a memo to investors, Bobby Kotick, the CEO of Activision, leads off like this, right? Leads off with, while our fa- financial results for 2018 were the best in our history, we didn't realize our full potential. Then he goes on to talk about specific games, plans for this year, you know, typical things that you do after fiscal end of year to talk to your investors, right? At the end of it, it says we have to make some structural changes, you know, in order to to realize our potential, yada, yada. Laid off 800 employees. After having their best. Quote, so they quote. say, yeah. well, our financial results for 2018 were the best in our history. And fuck you, 800 people. Laid them off. What's going on with these companies, these giant companies? They're giant companies. That's what's going <laughs> on with them. Yeah. And they're going to they, take full advantage while it's still not unionized. So that's that's 8% of their work staff, which is a ridiculous. That means they have almost you know 10,000 employees. Yeah. Um, so, you know, thoughts out to the people that were laid off, obviously. This is terrible. Yeah. Uh, but I really, really hope I'm hopeful that something this fucking evil, when you're literally saying this is the best year in our history, yeah, and then laying off 800 people, I'm really hoping that like smoke signals going out to people, like something's got to change. Between this and Rockstar, I mean, gosh, if this isn't the spark to, like you said, Shelby, unionize or something. And Telltale. Yeah, and Telltale. It's it's, it's way a tre- overdue. It's a trend that it's just way keeps, overdue. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about it here just to get it out there for people that haven't heard about it or anything um pretty fucked up and Jeez, not happy about that situation so that's horrible so the 20 people that listen to this you better yep time to take there. action yeah seriously time to take action send your tweets <laughs> that's it all right so again fuck you activision and hopefully uh this is this is a beginning steps towards true unionization gosh all right, back to the happy news. Happy news. Nintendo Direct. I don't know much about the Nintendo Direct, so yeah. That's great because this is one of the best <laughs> this is one of the best Nintendo Directs I've seen in a long time. Of all so, time. So, I said in a long time, in a long time. Of all time. Probably. <laughs> uh, so, Nintendo Direct for us just happened this past Wednesday. It was February 13th. Um I basically took took notes of things that I, in particular, am interested in it and and felt uh, felt were particularly important to us. Um, so right off the bat, they announced Super Mario Maker Two, <gasps> coming out June 2019. All oh. they did was add Luigi to the cover. Oh, is that, <laughs> is that, is that, is no, 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 no. <laughs> it looks like they're ad- they're doing a lot of really smart things. Um, I could get into the nitty gritty about the differences if you want, but I think the real takeaways are they're adding 3D world stuff. They're adding the katsu. They're adding stuff like that. Um, he plays other, you know, Mario 
art like in the original you're able to play is like Super Mario World, Mario Brothers Three. So they haven't Mario announced any. They haven't announced any new ones yet. Oh man, you're like um, Mario Brothers Two or something. I know the problem with Two is it's so different. That'd be so cool. But it's like different, like That'd really so, different yeah. though. Like you have, you can't jump on enemies' heads to kill them. Yeah, That's true. You know that'd, yeah, you be, that'd pick be hard. Up, you gotta pick up the turnip and throw it at Birdo. Come on. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't love that, <laughs> um, but. Looks really good. Uh, some they made the sun that chases you. From oh, Mario from Mario Three. That's awesome. So that'll be haunting everyone's levels, I'm sure. Um, just a really smart. I mean, that original game was so good and so unique. I'm just so happy that they're making a sequel. That's to so it. awesome. Yeah. And it's coming out this. I year. just can't wait to play other people's levels because mine suck. So I can't wait to play. <laughs> I can't wait to play like really good people. I mean, that's why it's so cool. That's why that game is so awesome because it's like. If you have that creative mind and you can make these awesome levels, that's, you're probably having a great time doing that. Yeah. If you can't, you're, you have Playing a plethora of amazing levels, yeah. levels just to play. Um, so Super Mario Maker 2 let, oh, off, oh, that's cool. let off the direct with a bang. Uh, then we got Bloodstained Ritual of Night release window, summer 2019. Mm-hmm. They showed some gameplay. They had a little trailer. Um, I'm a little nervous about this game. Dan. Oh, talk to me. It just looks a little funky. It's like the graphical quality is not good. It looks, it just look, you know, it looks like, it looks like a really budget, <laughs> budget game. Like a, like an iPhone game almost. It doesn't uh, look very good, but I still have faith. I think Circle of the Moon was, was, oh wait, that's not what it's called. Uh, Cir- Circle of the Moon was an actual stained. Castlevania. Yeah, Circle of the Moon was, yeah, that's the one with uh, uh, Curse that's of for the, the Game moon, Boy. Right? Curse of the Moon? No? It's for the Game Boy. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about Bloodstain. Yeah, Bloodstain, Curse of the Moon. Thing. Curse of yeah, the Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I so. Think... I should move this up. So I have it written down. I like that game a lot. So I still have faith. I'm not like I'm just saying that they they made this trailer and if you make a trailer you're Curse of the Moon. Circle of the Moon. You're yeah. getting deep, You're trying yeah. to show put your best foot forward, I would yeah. imagine. And if this is their best foot forward, I'm, I'm a little good. nervous, is all I'm saying. It's a Koji <laughs> Igarashi. I know. We'll see. I'm I'm actually be honest with you. I was looking at um I I didn't see the direct, but even before then, when I was looking at like pictures for for the new game coming out and stuff like that, and like I know he's going for a different direction. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, I can't remember these Castlevania for some reason. It was for the Xbox 360. You could play as Alucard, uh, Simon, and uh, it's 2D. It's 2D, but like it's like 3D on 2D. I don't remember. To say that it reminds me of the Swapper would be saying a disservice to the Swapper, okay. but like it's like <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. But it just reminded me of that where it's kind of like blocky and like I was just like, uh, well, I forget where we, not rich, Ritual of the Night. Oh, this is the new, this new game. That's the new game. All right. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So that's about 360. I'm a little and like looking at it, it, like just pictures yeah. and stuff like that, and even yeah. just gameplay. Um, I would have preferred maybe more of like a 2D, the way that Ayami Kojima did the original Symphony of the Night. I mean, yeah, that'd be um, ideal. That'd be really cool. Yeah, we'll see. I, I you know, still definitely going to give it a fair shot. It's just, you know, yeah. Th- this trailer kind of made me go, I don't know about this. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. All right. Um, next on my on my list, I have Fire Emblem Three Houses release date, July twenty sixth this year. They showed a long, probably five, six, seven minute clip of like going between like some story stuff showing a little bit of action um i love fire emblem games if this is a good one of those i'm on board um but we'll see july 26th awesome fire emblem was awesome what was the last one conquest was the last one that came out yeah conquest it was called it was con- there was, well there was like the three it was conquest those three there was awakenings and then after that there was th- conquest well there were two lines th- or something yeah like, or no, but <laughs> Castlevania. My I have no sh- idea. My brain shot. They were good games. You play Zan- Xander's in it. Yeah, but uh, you choose you depending on which game you play. Right. It's if you're you stick with your family or yeah. you go against the family. It's like Pokemon Red and Blue. Yeah. Uh, then we had the Tetris ninety nine announcement and release. I already talked about Tetris ninety nine. Really cool. Um, <clears throat> then Delta Rune Chapter One coming out on Switch February twenty eighth for free. Okay. Which is good. That should. That's, that's great. That's, that's nothing it. more than what we've already played. Nope. Same no. one. It's just, you know, not everybody has a PC. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's cool that, you know, obviously Toby Fox is a fan of Switch and wants, you know, you, this is like laying the groundwork for when the full Delta Room comes out or it'll come out on Switch right away, cool. you know. 
So no more news on it though, like a full nothing yet. No, he's still saying I'll, I'll let you know when when we're, when we're ready to talk. About <laughs> keep it. you posted. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. Then we had Hellblade: Send of a Sacrifice coming to Switch. Yeah. Spring 2019. So cool. You know, we like that game. You guys like it more than I do, but I'm a big fan of that game. game. Um. Then we had Final Fantasy IX. So we already they already said that they're releasing all the Final Fantasies except for eight for some reason yeah why not eight i don't know they hate eight but um don't like that number so <laughs> final fantasy nine they said you so can play it right man. now so it it was released yeah it was what's cool um so nine one of one of my favorites is nine and they released it so it's out now on the switch like Didn't they're they? releasing everything from like one to current yeah, uh, not current. Up to nine. Nine's oh, that's cool. to buy, yeah. Wasn't nine just released for a PS4 not too long ago? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. People, I mean, you know, everyone wants everything on the Switch because it's nice. Switch is awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then we have, this is where it gets interesting. We have two really big, big ticket items in a row. So the first one is a game called Astral Chain was announced, and it's by Platinum, mm-hmm. who makes Bayonetta, you know, all these all these character action games but it just looks so weird and so cool and it's coming out august 30th they announced and it just was one of those out of nowhere kind of things right it was like we never even heard of this game like and then they're showing it's just you got to watch the trailer because it's just bonkers it's so it's like like sci-fi right yeah it's like like, it's like two future cops (laughs) that are like these monsters are invading the city and they're like transforming into like mech suits and like fighting. They're doing like combo attacks where someone will come up and then this person like projects a bow into them and like shoots the other person over there. It's like a bunch of anime nonsense, but it looks really, really neat. Cool. Yeah. So I'm excited to check that out. Then the big one. They are doing, Nintendo is doing a Link's Awakening remake for Nintendo Switch coming out 2019. I so excited <laughs> it this, looks incredible so first of all <laughs> the graphical style that they go with it some people hate it i love it i no, think it looks awesome amazing it's like claymation mm-hmm. almost and it's got like a tilt shift thing where like the outside edges are blurry but wherever you're near it's like clear Guys, it's, that is it is that is just one of the best games <coughs> ever it's one of the best games ever yeah. i love that game and we, oh i can't even i don't even i'm just i'm so excited yeah, I, I'm really happy that they're doing it because the last time, I mean, they did, uh, they did a DX version for, um, 3DS or something like that. No, it was that- way earlier. I don't know if it was DS or if it was, because the original came out on Game just Boy. Game the Boy. Game Boy, yeah. yeah. Was it so 91? I don't remember no colors it, or anything. I think it was just white. black and white. You know. Like, I don't remember if DX was just it, if it was advanced or if it was DS. But they released it, an updated version where they colored it and stuff, and that was the last thing we ever saw of it. So the fact that they're making a from the ground up remake of it, it's just so exciting. It just it deserves the love, and I just it I love Majora's Mask, but like Link's Awakening would be like a like a right right by there. That just that whole freaking it's story. It's fantastic Legends of Zelda game that I think was surpassed by some people. You know, like given that it was oh the way, totally you know, like, it yeah. was like well, it's a great game. Yeah. But I mean, it, it it's the one that's not on a main console that I would want on a main console. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. it is the game that more people need to play. Not really into yeah. Spirit Tracks, are you? I like Spirit Tracks. I but mean, that was it's that not was a DS Link's game. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a DS game. This, DS this game. one must have been a GBA game. The one I'm thinking of, the remake they had. Yeah. I don't DS. know. I just the original one was what was it 90, 91? I think it was maybe ninety two. Maybe it was after. Yeah, Link to it was. The past. It was definitely after Link to the Past, mm. but it was close. It was ninety two, ninety three. I would say. Oh man, just uh, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but just you can't. Yeah, but just no, can't. Like, now that oh. now that they're making this, I can't. know. Yeah. But oh, so now man. you know what we're gonna have to do is spoilers. Guys? We're Play gonna it? have to oh, do man. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to do after after they make this remake. We're gonna have to do an episode where we rank the Zelda games. This is what makes me so happy, though, especially this game, because I feel like this is the game, like you said, not on a console. When I talk to people that are into Legend of Zelda or like talk about Zelda games, this is like for me, the like kind of like the the black sheep of them mm-hmm. that deserves so much more praise mm-hmm. and like it should be talked about more than than it gets. A lot of people that yeah. play Zelda games haven't played it because you know it's not for a console and it came out on the Game Boy. Nobody has a Game Boy anymore. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like. 
It's the best candidate for oh this. Oh my yeah, gosh, it's, it's, it's awesome. so good. And if, it wasn't. I remember it not being easy. I mean, I also remember being like eight, but I remember yeah, it not yeah. being easy yeah. when I, I played it. I, I just love that studios are doing this right now. Like this Resident Evil Two remake, and then they're doing this from the ground yeah. up. Like brand, because they're new games. You know what I'm saying? Like the way they're doing this, this is a new game. Mm-hmm. You see the perspective. Like you see the like. I do love they kind of kept that same opening sequence. You know, oh, like, yeah. it's not a 3D awesome. rendering so or anything awesome. like that. Like, oh, it's so cool. Oh, I just, just I change love this it a game little so bit. much. Yeah. So, this game is due out 2019. We have no idea when. I would guess probably near the end of the year. Um, but it's really, really exciting. I just can't wait to spend I'm, some more time with the windfish. Let's do that. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's I'm so, so excited. good. Giant egg. Oh, my God. There are so many things in that game that are just totally bizarre like it is just such a amazing like interesting game and that's what it is when you look at like the zelda canon for me it's i said Link's awakening majora's mask that just completely said all right we're just going to kind of go off the rails well, like in the best yeah. of ways you know in it's such an like, interesting way yeah. yeah but that's that's so good i'm so i'm so excited of all the games they could have picked you're right that's the one that's the one that's the one that's the one yeah all right well that's gonna do it for the episode Thank you, Dan, for being here with thank me. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Shelby. It was a hassle. And thank you guys <laughs> for watching and or listening. And until next time. Peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and or listening. Just here to remind you that you can find us by searching for Circle Back Podcasts or Circle Back Gaming on any of these podcast services. Anchor, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, or Stitcher. My God, I'm out of breath because of all these podcast services. But you can find us anywhere there. Also, you can find us, our video version, on YouTube by searching Circle Back Podcast or Circle Back Gaming. Uh, and the rest of the videos we do. Thanks, guys.